In my experience in helping family historians, I've discovered that there are some common mistakes that people make. Now, I was going to say that beginners make, but honestly, everyone makes these mistakes. So let's talk about what they are, and more importantly, how we can avoid them. The first mistake, and it really is more common with beginners, is taking everything at face value. And this takes a lot of different forms. It can actually start all the way back with those family stories that you grew up with. The more fantastic the tale, or the longer ago that event supposedly took place, the chances are that it's not entirely accurate. I had this in my own family. When I was little, my grandma liked to say that she was related to Brigham Young, which, thinking back on it, that was kind of an unusual thing for my very Methodist grandma to claim. Well, when I started digging into my own family history, I discovered that there was absolutely no connection between my grandma and Brigham Young. The only connection, if you want to call it that, was that they had the same last name. Another way that this plays out of taking things at face value is when we're taking a look at genealogy websites or in books. Now, if you've spent some time on some of the big genealogy websites like Ancestry, MyHeritage, or FamilySearch, you might not realize that those are different records that you are looking at and that these different records have different strengths and weaknesses. Getting to understand the records that you're looking at, that just comes with experience. But one thing that you definitely need to keep in mind is that there is a difference between someone's family tree and a record. Now, someone's family tree, that can have some really good clues for you in your research. On the other hand, that online family tree or that printed family tree can be utterly and completely wrong. Taking someone else's tree and attaching it to yours is a surefire way to make a mess of everything. Think of it this way. If that tree that you were looking at if it has one generation wrong, just one, let's say that they have Robert's father was John, but in reality, Robert's father was William. If you've taken that online tree and you've just attached it to yours, you've just added a whole bunch of people that you're not related to. So use those trees as clues, but don't just attach them wholesale to your tree. And this ties into the next big mistake that I see people make, and that is going too fast. Ancestry and other big genealogy websites, they make it so easy to attach things to our family tree. And that's really convenient, but sometimes it's actually a little too convenient. It makes it so easy to have a record pop up and at first blush, it might look like it pertains to your person, so you go ahead and attach it, but actually that record was for somebody else with the same name. Let's say that you're trying to find a passenger list for your ancestor, John Johnson, who was born in England around 1870 and up pops this passenger list for a John Johnson. Oh, okay, and you just go ahead and attach him? But that record was actually for a John Johnson born in Sweden in 1883. Okay, that's not your guy. It just happens to be someone with the same name. So slow down, take a look at what that record says. Does it even make sense for it to be your person? Another way that we go too fast with our research is not exploring the things that we already have. If you're starting out on your family history research, don't spend all of your time on ancestry. Talk to your relatives. What do they know about the family history? What family papers might you have? 
And when I say family papers, I don't mean that somebody's already compiled a family history book for you. I mean things like obituaries, photos, postcards, scrapbooks, yearbooks. All of these things can have clues for you that can really help you along the way in your family history journey. And if you're a more experienced family historian, when was the last time you went back and looked at those notes that you've already compiled, that research that you've already done? It is amazing how often you can answer a research question just by going back and looking at notes that you took six months ago, a year ago, two years ago. Suddenly, it makes sense to you how those records fit in. We also go too fast by skipping steps. And oh my gosh, is this easy to do? Because we'll find something fascinating about an ancestor and then suddenly we want to go research that particular part of our ancestor's life. Let's say that you had been researching an ancestor who was living in Chicago in 1930. And you find him in the 1930 census and it says that he was born in Ireland. And the next thing you know, you're off looking for Irish records. Well, do you really know enough about that person who was living in Chicago, Illinois in 1930? Do you know enough about him to actually be able to identify him correctly in records in Ireland? You skipped a whole bunch of steps between Chicago, Illinois and Ireland. This is also common to do when you're trying to prove or disprove a family legend. Let's say that your grandpa said that you were descended from one of Abraham Lincoln's bodyguards. So it's tempting to go try to find a list of all of Abraham Lincoln's bodyguards and hope to find a surname that sounds familiar. Well, really what you need to do is work from the known to the unknown. Start with yourself and just keep researching back until you get to that generation that would have been alive during the Civil War. And then research those people. It could very easily turn out that that relative that your grandpa was talking about wasn't one of Abraham Lincoln's bodyguards. He was just a regular old private who never ever came close to Lincoln. But the tale kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. A mistake that hits genealogists of all experience levels is falling into a rut. They'll find a couple of resources or a couple of websites that they really like and then they just keep going back and back and back to just those. Speaking of liking things, if you have found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. I sure would appreciate it. Thanks. We also fall into ruts of trying to do the same type of search over and over, or just looking at the same types of records all the time. But here's the thing. There isn't a one-size-fits-all search strategy. And different records will be able to give you different types of information that can help you with your research. You might have noticed that I haven't talked at all about specific record types. Well, it's because in my experience, the family historians who have the most success with the least amount of frustration are the ones who develop a sense of curiosity. Curiosity not just about their ancestors, but about the research process and about the different types of records that they're using. If you're new to genealogy, or even if you've been doing this for a while, don't get discouraged when you don't understand everything about a record. Very few people come into genealogy knowing all about the ins and outs of census records and vital records and probate records. It just comes with experience. But taking the time and having the curiosity to learn about these records and how they can really be applied to your research, that's going to help you so much. That's going to help you make so many more discoveries. Stay curious. When you're on a website and you're looking at a type of record you don't understand, look to see if there's 
an About page or a Frequently Asked Questions page. Stay open to learning about the different types of records and how you can use them. Here on my channel, I do talk about different types of records, different search strategies, and ways that you can make more discoveries in your family history. And I invite you to hit that subscribe button so that you can learn more. Genealogy is a fascinating journey with so much to discover along the way. Continue your journey with one of these videos popping up on your screen right now. Happy researching!